Hey, hey, just a quick intro here. Uh, you're about to watch an episode of my podcast. Uh, it's primarily audio only, so I do two episodes a week, uh, solo episodes on Tuesdays, interview episodes on Thursdays. The interview episodes do not go up on this channel, so if you want to listen to those, if you want to hear those, uh, head over to iTunes or Spotify, subscribe to Tiny Leaps Big Changes. Enjoy the show. Welcome to another episode of Tiny Leaps, Big Changes, where I share simple strategies you can use to get more out of your life. My name is Greg Clunas, and in this episode, I am talking about energy. More specifically, I want to talk about how to keep our energy levels up throughout the day, and especially over long periods of time when we need to stay focused, when we need to be productive, when we need to get stuff done. This is something that I struggle with quite often, like really, really often, and uh, it's tough. It's not an easy thing to deal with because as we go through the day, as we pull on our energy stores, they deplete, and if there's a finite amount of energy that we have to work with, then what that means is at some point, we are going to run out of it. And that's what I want to help you tackle today. So uh, what I've found to work best, at least for me, I have, I have four real things that, that I fo try to focus on. And uh, three of them are going to sound very uh, common. You know, this isn't rocket science here. There's no need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, however, the last one I think you might find interesting. So definitely make sure you stick around for that. With that said, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button right now. That's the best way to make sure you never miss a new episode. Click that subscribe button and let's jump into it. So the very first thing you need to be doing if you want to uh, keep your energy levels up, if you want to... Uh, you know, just be able to navigate the day better is to focus on drinking more water. And uh, the, I know this, it sounds pretty obvious, but uh, there's something really important here. It's not just about drinking more water in the specific day that you need more energy. It's about drinking more water overall. If you spend the time each and every day to try and hit your water goals, to uh, drink enough that you're hydrated, what you'll find is that there's never a day where you are sort of getting to that dehydration phase and running out of energy, which is often why we feel tired in the middle of the day. It's, it's actually dehydration more than lack of sleep. Uh, so I would spend as much time as you can, as, as much time as you can dedicate towards uh, making sure you're drinking enough water, making sure that you're taking in fluids and, and uh, restoring those resources throughout the day because you're going to run out. You're pulling on it all day. Your body needs it to operate effectively and needs it to, to fuel itself. And so if you're not constantly restoring that water, you're going to run into issues. And what you want to do is make this into a habit every single day. It's about long-term uh, benefits of drinking every single day as opposed to trying to solve the specific problem on that specific day. So that's my first piece of advice. Take the time to drink enough water each and every individual day, and you'll find that you'll start to have less of those issues, not no issues, but less of those issues as you go along. The second piece of advice is to eat cleaner. Now, this is something that uh, I think we all kind of know, but I'll be honest, I didn't fully understand the benefits of it until I did Whole30 recently. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, Whole30 is a month-long uh, challenge, I guess, or diet. I'm not, I'm not really sure how it categorizes itself. That is just focused on eating clean whole foods. Uh, and that includes removing grains, like any sweeteners, like that sort of thing. Uh, so it's really just like a lot of meat, a lot of vegetables, a lot of avocado, like that sort of thing. And um, I felt amazing every single day. Like it's, it's actually incredible how good I felt eating clean. A couple episodes ago, we had a guest on that um, just talked about this, like what it's like to eat clean and uh, be healthy. Uh, it's Daniel from Evolution Eat. Definitely check out their website at www.evolutioneat.com. Uh, but he really dropped a ton of knowledge on us. And 
after going through it myself, after seeing what it's like to eat clean and have that energy because I'm, I'm properly uh, receiving the nutrients I need, it's massive. It's so 100% worth it. So definitely, definitely take that time to uh, plan out your meals ahead. Try to incorporate more greens. Cut out processed foods as much as you can. Cut out artificial, artificial and added sweeteners as much as you can. And just try to eat as clean as you can. That's uh, In addition to drinking more water, that's one of the things that really creates a sustained win instead of just trying to solve the issue on that specific day. Now, the third piece of advice, the third thing that I've found works extremely well for me is uh, just to get more sleep. And um, this is something that I I struggle with. Like, I'll be perfectly honest here. I really struggle with getting enough sleep. Uh, I'm I'm a night owl. I always have been. I'm more creative at night. And so I tend to want to stay up and work and and get stuff done at like 2 a.m. when I have to wake up at 7 the next morning. Uh, But it's just not worth it, I've found. It's, It's not worth it to sacrifice sleep in order to gain maybe some short-term benefit. Like it's just not worth it because what ends up happening is I stay up late. It's like 2, 3 a.m. I've really hustled. I've gotten maybe an extra three to four hours of just really good stuff done. Then I finally crash and I have to wake up in, you know, four or five hours. What then happens is that entire day, not just the four to five hours that I gained, it's not a one-to-one trade, that entire day, I'm a zombie. That entire day, I, I don't have the ability to, to, to really focus and get stuff done and be productive, and I'm chugging coffee, which is causing my blood sugar to spike and then crash, and maybe I'm making worse eating decisions, and I'm not drinking enough water. Like All of these things sort of like pile on top of each other because I wanted an extra three hours of productivity. So it's just not worth it unless you absolutely have to make that trade. Like there's still times to this day that last night, for example, I stayed up late to get uh, final or second round edits on my book done in time because they were due this morning. Like that, that was a hard deadline I could not miss. And so I did have to make that sacrifice today. I did have to, uh, you know, sacrifice some sleep and maybe some productivity today in order to make that work. But in the long term, that's not worth it unless you absolutely have to do it. So 100%, if there's nothing else you do on this list, uh, get more sleep. Getting more sleep will put you in such a great place each and every day and allow you the opportunity to really create a win for yourself productivity-wise, and it's 100% worth it. And then the last one, the last piece of advice I have, the last thing that I think has done a tremendous amount for getting my energy levels right, for, for keeping it sustained all day, is actually kind of a unique one. Uh, this this is one that a friend of mine, actually, his name is John, uh, introduced me to this app. It's called Sleepy Time. So it's S-L-E-E-P-Y ti dot me that's the website for it and of course link that up in the description and um what it allows you to do is two options one you put in what time you want to wake up and it'll tell you what time you should be asleep by or you say what time should i wake up if i fall asleep right now and how it works is that it bases it off of the average human sleep cycle so if the average sleep cycle is about four hours What tends to happen for most of us if we wake up by an alarm is we go to sleep and maybe we're getting eight hours sleep or rather seven hours sleep, but uh, we're waking up at that seventh hour and we're waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle. And that causes us to be more tired than if we had gotten uh, six hours sleep but finished the sleep, uh, woke up at the end of a sleep cycle. And so what what ends up happening here is... uh, we spend so much time in the mornings like groggy and tired and and not feeling rested not because we didn't get enough sleep but because a sleep cycle was interrupted sleepy time the app allows you to uh, better predict when to wake up in order to coordinate with your sleep cycle and if you have a tool like a fitbit or something that helps you measure your sleep that's even better the more data you can get around uh, when you're sleeping at your deepest how long that lasts and uh, when you should set your alarm or when you should try to wake up the better off you'll be because if you can uh, time it to finish up a sleep cycle 
and wake up after that before starting the next sleep cycle, if you can make that work timing wise, you're going to win. You're going to wake up with so much energy. Uh, you're going to want to spring out of bed. Like I've done this honestly with four hours sleep at the end of one sleep cycle. And whenever I'm, I'm in one of those phases where I'm staying up super late, I know I'm only getting three to four hours. Uh, I know I have to wake up early and there's no way I can push it. I always use sleepy time. I always let it dictate when I should wake up. And even to the extent of if it says if I'm able to sleep till 7.30 in the morning, but it says I should wake up at 6.51, I'm going to wake up at 6.51 because what will happen is if I sleep till 7.30, it might seem like, hey, I'm getting you know an extra 30 minutes, but now I'm waking up in the middle of a sleep cycle. I'm going to feel more tired than if I just woke up at 6.51 at the end of a sleep cycle. So those are the four things I would recommend. Those are the four ways that I've personally I started to manage my energy and get myself to a good place energy-wise. First is to drink more water. Definitely, definitely incorporate that into your life. Second is to eat healthier, eat cleaner. That's going to help sustain your energy so much better than uh, when you put processed stuff in your body. Third is to get more sleep. That is massive, massive for making this work. And then fourth, a little bit of a hack, is to try and wake up at the correct time, right at the end of a sleep cycle, and use data to figure that out out. So with that said, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, I hope this was valuable to you. If you haven't already, click or tap that subscribe button. It's the best way to make sure you never miss a new episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, by the way, I do do, uh, do the solo episodes up on YouTube now. So definitely head over to youtube.com slash Greg Clunas to subscribe. Uh, that's how you can see my face while I'm doing this. Uh, and this little microphone pointing at that face. I, I don't know. It's real awkward. Anyway, youtube.com slash Greg Clunas. Click subscribe there. Check out the vlogs. Check out the video versions of these podcasts. Uh, if you're listening in audio, I love you. You're awesome. I've, <laughs> I love you too if you're watching video. It's not that big of a deal. Anyway, my point is thank you so much for listening. Definitely click subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate you. And remember that all big changes come from the tiny leaps you take every day.